All right, so today it's something a little different. Um, so you might know that there's a QML hackathon going on right now called QHack. Um, it's hosted by um, Xanadu and Penny Lane, which is a, a software for QML stuff. Uh, I've never, I've never used it. Um, but it was it's required for this hackathon. And so um, I figured I would go over um, some of the solutions to the hackathon problem. So specifically, there was an initial, um, like they gave you 16 questions and you had to solve them. And the top X amount of people get you know some amount of credit for like amazon bracket and stuff like that the top 20 people um get to enter the open hackathon and get judged uh to for other prizes but uh, i i don't want to get bogged down in the details all of that um you can see on their website and also you probably know it's like a huge thing in qml right now but um so i i completed the first part of the hackathon and i got full i got full credit uh, and so I figured I would go over all of these solutions because it's, I think some of them are helpful just to know Penny Lane and some of them are useful just, uh, in terms of understanding. And so, um, and so, uh, I, like I said before, I've never, I, before this hackathon, before I opened up these questions, I had never used Penny Lane. And so I may get things incorrect about this software or I may get things, you know, I'm, I may not be exactly correct. Um, so I, I encourage you to look at their website. They do have great tutorials. Um, and so if, if you already know Penny Lane, this might not, this first part might not be so great because <clears throat> if you go to the QHack website, you'll see there's um, four different sets of problems. There's simple circuits, quantum gradients, circuit training, and BQEs. And so today is just uh, the simple circuits. Um, and so <clears throat> you can also check on the um, leader on the, on the scoreboard. Um, you can see uh, if you want to verify <laughs> my claims, you can see I'm currently finished the first part in 11th place. Um, it's, and it's the whole event is team based, but I, I decided to do it solo. So you can see ontological haberdashery is a, that's my team name. And that's me in 11th place. And so um, I think fig I figured we'll just get right into it. Um, and so the, the general design of, of Penny Lane is I, I overall, I, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would, but there are some, hmm, you know, interesting idiosyncrasies that uh, I don't always um, appreciate, but we'll just get into looking at the code. So the way this hackathon worked is they gave you a problem PDF, um, some basically wrapper code for their input because you would submit it and they would test on their server. Um, and then, so you can see this wrapper code is um, theirs. And then you would have to fill in a section to solve the problem. So we can see the first problem is really simple. We have to create a quantum circuit that simply rotates around the X axis and yields um, the uh, this uh, probability of measuring in the uh, up state or the ground state zero. So whenever you're running on uh, Penny Lane, and this is one of the nice things, is that you can define a quantum device. And so the default is just their simulator, default.qubit, but you can also use PyTorch and TensorFlow um, with it. And you can also use real hardware with Amazon Bracket, I'm pretty sure. And so um, the default number is um, unlike a TensorFlow Quantum, which can have just raw expectation values. Um, this I think this can as well, but it defaults to estimating the expectation value by a uh, using 1000 measurements. Also, they call wires qubits, or they call qubits wires, I should say. Not, 
not the biggest fan of that design decision, but that's okay. And so um, you define node, Q nodes whenever you want to run a circuit because the Q node links some circuit to a device. And so here we can see the circuit takes the parameter, rotates the RX and returns the probability. Um, and this is the qubit it's measuring on. And um, this gives a probability of each state. And so we want the first state. And so um, the important thing to take away here is that you need a device and you need this, uh, what's called a decorator to connect this circuit to a device. You, there's also a function you can use to do this, but um, the decorator is just nice to do. And so uh, that's pretty much just all there is for the first problem. These first ones are basically just giving you the intro. So the second one um, is basically the same thing, but this time we do the RY, we rotate the Y angle, and then get, we get the expectation value of the poly X operator. So once again, we create a device and we rotate Y. This is just the angle and this is the qubits. And then we can see that QML.XVAL exp is the expectation value. And then we uh, specify a poly operator. Um, and uh, actually what I meant to do is also run this code. So we can see, they also gave you inputs. So if we do, you can see there's two n. So we can do, it will run the input. Um, and generate the output here. Um, we can do the same thing with two. Um, this isn't really exciting because you don't know what the ends and outs are, but I should say all these questions are available. Um, and so, um, yeah, so for the third problem, this one was a little more complex. First, we create a bell state, and then we create, um, then we rotate our Y on qubit zero and measure the expectation value of Z on each of them. Um, specifically, the expectation value of Z tensor Z or Z tensor product Z. And so we can do that by um, using the matrix multiplication symbol. So this time we have to define two um, qubits. Uh, we do the C naught and this is a target, or sorry, this is control comma target. Then we do RY and we do the expectation value of these two. And so, uh, we can get the expectation value by then just by then just calling this circuit, and that's true in that's true in each of them. Is you just call the circuit to you just call the circuit in each one, and that's how you execute whatever the return value is. And so that's um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over the basics of Penny Lane. Um, and, and so uh, next time I will also be returning to more TensorFlow quantum um, information. Um, but I just, because I had to do so much Penny Lane, I figured that I would share all of this code and I'll also share all of my code for all of the challenges, which I got, I, I ended up getting every single one correct. So I'll, I'll share all that later. Um, and eventually, when I finish the open hackathon, I'll share that as well. Although, to be honest, I do not know what I'm doing for the open hackathon, even though I finish in the top 20. And so therefore, I'm eligible to be judged. So I, I need to think of an idea. Um, so that's hopefully uh, making other videos will help me think of something to do for the open hackathon.